Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we'll discuss different cooling solutions for Raspberry Pi and check which one's the best. So stay tuned till the end. Number 10. If one cooling fan's not giving you the desired performance, then you may attach multiple fans to your Pi, just like Michael did. He placed 24 fans on his Raspberry Pi 4B. By using an acrylic sheet for the frame, he covered his Pi from all sides. He split the fans evenly so that the fans on one side push the air into the case and the fans on the other side pull the air out. As compared to the ice tower, the temperature of the Pi, in this case, was 4 to 5 degrees lower while running at 1.5 gigahertz as well as at 2.2 gigahertz. Number 9. Now let us look at how a water cooling solution will perform. Michael mounted a cooling block and a bracket over the SOC. Next, he used a pump and a radiator that circulates the water and keeps the pie cool. As compared to the ice tower cooling, the temperature in water cooling was reduced by 10 degrees Celsius when tested at 1.5 gigahertz. While at 2.2 gigahertz, the temperature was reduced by 20 degrees Celsius. So the water cooling solution's effective if you're trying to overkill your pie, as it reduces the temperature to a great extent. Number 8. Being fed up with the temperature rise issue, Michael Darby tried to use a heat sink for his pie. It wasn't giving him the desired results, so he poured a bottle of vegetable oil in a box and placed the pie inside it. To his surprise, the pie booted up and was running his favorite game. In this case, the temperature of pie was around 15 degrees lower in the idle conditions and more than 20 degrees lower while playing the game. Though the pie survived after this experiment and was still running, we should not consider this a practical solution. Number 7. When the DIYers get creative, that's when we get some amazing results. This user tried cooling his Raspberry Pi with the pennies. Yep, you heard it right. He stacked some pennies over the SOC and found that the temperature dropped by 1 degree in this case. He also found that by using pre-1982 pennies, there was a drop of 1.8 degrees, while using post-1982 pennies increased the temperature by 2.1 degrees. This happened due to the presence of zinc, which is a terrible thermal conductor. The temperature reduces to a great extent when the case is not used. Altium's a PCB design software that's both powerful and easy to use. With its intuitive interface and comprehensive set of features, Altium Designer makes it easy to create high-quality PCB designs. And with all-new Altium 365, now you can share your PCB designs with anyone from anywhere with a single click. With Octopart, you can get real-time component insights as you design your PCB in Altium. Check the description for more details. Number 6. If you prefer the low-profile cooling solution for your Raspberry Pi, then make sure to check this project. In this test, when Raspberry Pi 4B was used without any cooling, the CPU temperature almost reached 83 degrees Celsius, and it throttled many times. While with the heatsink, the temperature went up to 72 degrees Celsius, it didn't throttle the CPU. Thus, the performance was not compromised. By setting a threshold temperature for the fan to turn on, some specific tasks like video rendering can also be completed in less time. Number 5. If you think that using a fan to cool a pie is not that efficient, then you can try this project. Using a steel plate, nuts, and bolts, Timmy made a perfect passive cooling setup for his pie. He made a hole in the steel plate and placed a large bolt that rests over the SOC. In idle conditions, this setup was 10 degrees cooler than the pie with no heatsink. Under the full stress test, this DIY heatsink's temperature was around 55 degrees Celsius, which was way less than the throttling temperature that the other pie reached. It also gave good results when the pie was overclocked. Number 4. Another confusion that most people have is whether to use a low-profile or vertical cooling setup for a pie. Hamilton tested both configurations on a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and found that the temperature was 2 to 3 degrees more in the case of a low-profile setup. 
Under idle conditions, the temperature of both the pies was 32 degrees Celsius, while during the stress test, the maximum temperature recorded was 43 degrees Celsius. Though the horizontal setup looks more pleasing, it could make the pie hotter as compared to the vertical one. Number 3. Almost all solutions that we've discussed here focus on cooling the SOC only. Chris built a cooling blaster for his Raspberry Pi 4 that uses a 120mm fan, a duct, and four standoffs that mount over a Raspberry Pi. This unique idea also cools the other components present on the board, but it's a bit louder than other setups. Now the question arises, is it efficient? If we look at the test result, it does keep the pie's temperature way below the throttling temperature, but as compared to the ambient, the temperature's still too high. Number 2. Copper is considered a great heat conductor, but will a copper heatsink be effective on a Raspberry Pi 4? Let's find out. So without any cooling, the maximum CPU temperature of the Pi reached 70 degrees Celsius, and the CPU was performing at its maximum capacity. But with the heatsink, the maximum temperature was 58 degrees Celsius. Also, while rendering a video, the heatsink kept the temperature about 15 degrees lower. So it's a compact solution for cooling. Number 1. Reusing a heatsink from an old computer seems like a good idea. But will it be efficient? Let's find out. The original heatsink was large, so Jeremy cut the sink in half so that it may fit over the Raspberry Pi. Still, it has a large surface area. When Raspberry Pi 4B was used without any cooling, the temperature went up to 72 degrees Celsius. But with the heatsink, the maximum temperature was 56 degrees Celsius. So a drop of 15 degrees temperature by reusing an old heatsink seems like a good idea. Now let's compare the temperature from all these solutions. Though they're tested on different Pi models and conditions, we can get a general idea. Comment down below the one you like the most. Drop a like and subscribe to our channel to keep supporting us. Goodbye!